Hello and welcome to the Greek for the week. We're in Luke 6 this week for the podcast. So our Greek for the week comes from Luke chapter 6 as well. Kai me krinete, kai ume krithete. Okay, well, krino means to judge. Now we might have thought that krinete was, or krinete, we might have thought that it was, you're judging. Um, a normal present active indicative second plural from krino. However, may tells us something because the ooh is the normal negation for an indicative. So if I have a may negating it, it's probably not indicative. In fact, it's not indicative. In this case, it's uh, imperative, it's command. And do not judge. Now actually, because it's a present, so this is called a prohibition, may with the present imperative. You can also make a prohibition by may with the aorist subjunctive. Um, which is kind of what happens here, but this is something slightly different. Um, so there's a sense of don't be judging. And that's the way I think I translated it. And don't be judging. Now, it can, I think, sometimes have a sense of stop judging, but we don't have any context that would lead us necessarily to think that that's what um, Jesus is saying here in Luke 6. So I'm just going to say, don't be judging me. Don't be judging. Um, that we should not, this should not be characteristic of a Christian. A Christian should not be judging. Uh, judging is, should not be the posture or orientation of a, of a believer. And don't be judging, and you will never be judged. So this is, this is subjunctive. It's a theta eta, so it's aorist, aorist passive. And then the, the long connecting vowel here, um, really it's got got the eta of the theta eta and the eta of the subjunctive and let's just put a, a hat on that thing um it's an aorist passive subjunctive uh second plural from crino also the new decided there's just too much going on here i'm leaving but with ume it's like and not not be judged um i'm going to call that a uh, well brooks and winbury call it a subjunctive of emphatic negation so I translated it, don't be judging and you'll never be judged. Um, again, these things aren't really absolutes, but they're because humans use hyperbole and such. But anyway, so don't judge and you won't be judged. And don't, don't be condemning and you will never be condemned. Same basic structure, may with the present imperative and then uh, ume with the aorist subjunctive. Aorist passive subjunctive, again, see the theta, eta, second plural. Uh, from kata, um, kata de kadzo, um, to condemn, okay? I uh, got a little little decay in the middle there, a little judgment going on in the middle there. And then with the kata, it's really judging, condemning. That's not quite right. It's fallacious what I just said, but ignore me. Okay, forgive and you will be forgiven. Apaluita. Now this is a present imperative. Be forgiving and you will be forgiven. Give and you will be given. Um, and it will be given to you to use on the next slide. I ran out of space. So didate is a second plural, yes. Because the di is on the front, didomi, it's a present. So again, this is a present active imperative, second plural from didomi. Second person, so in the present tense, the present indicative and the present imperative always look the same in the second plural, which is what this is. Uh, theta, eta, sigma is aorist passive. And there's the do, a didomy, a do is a didomy. Um, anyway, so this is, er, uh, this is future passive indicative, third singular from didomy. Okay, it will be given uh, to you. Who min? Um, metron, cologne, pepi as menon, good measure pressed down. Shaken together, running over. Anyway, um, measure good, good measure. So when you buy some grain, you want it to be measured out well. You want it to be pressed down so it's not, so you're getting your money's worth. Um, so this is a men are passive participles, right? And with the, the reduplication on the front, gets a little beside itself, puts an epsilon in the middle. This is a perfect passive participle. I don't know quite what the word is, but probably piezo, something like piezo, I would guess. So the having comes from the fact that it's perfect. 
And the perfect also suggests that it stays pressed down. <clears throat> uh, so it's perfect passive participle, uh, accusative uh, masculine singular, I would say, going with measure. It's a measure that's good. It's a measure that's pressed down. It's a measure that's having been shaken and it's a measure that is overflowing. Um, and that's what they'll give. Um, right, so the next word, sesalumenun, also men are passive participles. So it's, the passive is the ben. It has a reduplication on the front. It's having been, perfect tense, and it remains shaken, not stirred. Uh, so it is a perfect passive participle, accusative, masculine, singular. And of course, metron could be neuter, I guess, a measure. Um, in fact, it probably is. We could look it up, but I'm guessing then if that's neuter, then these would all be neuter. And then hooper ek kunomenon. So men are passive participles, uh, although this might actually be deponent, I'm not sure, because there's no bin in the translation. Um, I think it's pr present, present deponent participle, accusative, neuter, singular, something like that. Overflowing, hyper, hyperflowing, um, hyper ek. Uh, anyway, overflowing. Uh, they will give dosusin, also didomi, do right there. Sigma indicates future, which is where the will comes from. O ace a amen eta usi, third plural, active ending. So this is future active indicative, third plural from didomi. Um, they will give into the belly of you, get into my belly. Um, for procrastinator. By what measure, it's a relative pronoun here, dative, dative neuter singular, I'm gonna say, I'm guessing that neutron, Jimmy Neutron is neuter. Uh, anyway, for by what measure, relative pronoun, by what measure you are measuring, metreta, present um, indicative, second plural, it will be measured back to you. anti metre theta tie. Uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Theta to sigma, it's future passive. Uh, epsilon, it's indicative because it's short. Tai, my side tie, third singular. So this is aorist passive indicative, third singular from antimetre, antimetreo, something like that, to you. All right, that's some interesting stuff, which is why I picked the verse. Luke does not disappoint. Luke 6, 38 and 37, 37 and 38. That's right. That's what we've done this week on the Greek of the week.